All right, how's everyone doing tonight? Thanks so much for joining. So tonight's going to be another another kind of fun show. Uh, Dan and I, we had done some talking, we did some reviews, uh, really all of that, um, and and it was something that we kind of, you know, put together maybe th three weeks or a month or so ago, and we wanted to share like kind of our experiences with with you guys. Um, we thought it was very special. And and we we got a hold of of Mike, who's our guest tonight, and um and we're gonna let him kind of share a little bit about everything that that Blue Run has going on, and I think you guys will really be like overly impressed. So rather than me talk anymore, uh, the more important part is I've got my I've got my Vanna White Big O Dan up here in the upper right hand corner for everybody. So I got uh, him and our special guest Mike Montgomery. Founder, CEO, Blue Run Spirits. Mike, thank you so much for joining tonight. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Scott. Thank you, Dan. Um, thank you. Really happy to be here. I I'm just kind of intrigued about what Dan just grabbed off the uh, off the shelf there. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the, one of the old school uh, Elijah Craig um, barrel proofs. This is the the 128 proof one here. So uh, you got the old, you got the old school one. Yeah, got the hazmat at the house, so that's uh, <laughs> that's the one I really want to crack open. But that's that's okay. That's okay. So yeah. So Mike, thanks for joining tonight. And you know, this was one of those things where after again, like I said before, Dan and I had an opportunity to uh, to review the the fall release, and you know, we were we were blown away. I would say for us to have the chance to do it. You know, you never know exactly what you're going to get into when you're getting samples. And, and, you know, we, we make no bones about it. We're going to review it the way we want, however it comes out. And, and we hadn't even talked about anything. So when we did our reviews, we were completely independent. We didn't talk about anything. So what he got and what I got, were both independent uh, of, of that, but it was very quickly that after I did mine and he did, he did his review that we, we talked to each other and said, Wow, man! I mean, this is this is. I mean, this is a, it was a special whiskey. We knew that it was a very just full bodied, full flavored whiskey, um, all of that. So we were we were kind of we were kind of blown away, so to speak. So that's great. Rather than Thank me, you. Kind of, rather than me gush it anymore about that, <laughs> if you don't mind, we'll we'll get into some of that stuff in a little bit. But cool. Do you want to kind of just share a little bit um, about yourself with everybody just to kind of give a, a little idea of, of kind of how it all started for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so th this all started, uh, you know, I, I can't take full credit. Uh, I, I have, uh, I have uh, four other founders um, and one of them is named Jesse McKnight. Um, Jesse grew up in Georgetown, Kentucky. Um, literally across the street from Elijah Craig's house, you know, and I like to say that, that, and I've seen the distance between these houses. If Jesse stood on his childhood front porch, he could throw a Nerf football and he could hit Elijah Craig's front door on a windy day. <laughs> um, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's really cool. The history of it is, is fascinating. And so Jesse grew up always wanting to be, uh, figure out how to be a part of this industry. Um, uh, you know, he was uh, a history prof uh, history professor, a history uh, major, um, and as was his dad. And, you know, they got to know the owner of Elijah Craig's house, um, you know, and being history majors and really interested uh, in this industry, he learned a lot about it. Um, and, you know, there were, I think, three distilleries in Scott County um, pre-prohibition. Um, and Jesse really wanted to try to figure out a way to get, uh, to get the bourbon industry revved up again in Scott, uh, Scott County, but mainly in Georgetown. Um, and you know, Georgetown is like, uh, you know, it's a fascinating place. It's a little bit Mayberry and a little bit big city because they've got the Toyota, uh, headquarters there, uh, also, but it's really just, it's, it's picturesque. I mean, he grew up, uh, playing in, um, in Royal Spring, uh, which he called the Blue Run back in the day, um, you know, catching crawdads and fishing and uh, splashing around. And, you know, um, that's the water that Elijah Craig credited with, you know, making his bourbon that, uh, you know, the, the that, you know, Dan's got in his glass, not that exact bourbon. If you did, that would be awesome. But, <laughs> um, that it would. 
that would be pretty awesome. But um, you know, that's that all came about, and and one day Jesse called me and and said, "Hey, let's talk about this." Um, and you know, I I drank my fair share of of what I'll call bad bourbon in college. Um, you know, it's the type of bourbon that you got to put Coke in it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right. I think, yeah. I think yeah. most of us, uh, most of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah we are, um, we're familiar with those. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what can we afford? Yep. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it was, it was always this, this industry that, that we romanticized. Um, you know, I mean, I, I wouldn't be doing this and you guys wouldn't be doing this either. If, if we didn't all, all kind of have that, that feeling, that, that yeah. sense of, of, what this is. It's fun. It's special. It's different. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, so, so we built the team and it's a really, it's a fun, diverse team. Um, you know, uh, Devin, our designer, the guy who, who did this, um, sorry, it's, it's, it's almost empty. Um, <laughs> but you know, we really like, we really like the package. We think the package is fun and he's, he's a Nike, uh, designer. Um, you know, he runs their, um, um, <clears throat> excuse me, he runs their, uh, their lifestyle design. So it's like the non, uh, sportswear, uh, you know, like, like not the Kyrie shoes or something, but yeah. more like air force ones. Um, uh, and you know, he knocked it out of the park and that was a fun, that was kind of a fun thing too. Just watching the progression of how Devin dealt with this, um, and, you know, uh, Tim, uh, our other partner, Tim is a former Facebook guy. Um, and so he's got a really good sense of, of, you know, kind of the online marketing side of it and, and, um, you know, learn some lessons also about how not to deal with customers, right? We, we like to take a hands-on approach and, um, <clears throat> you know, really interact to the extent we can with everybody. Um, and then uh, Andy, uh, Andy comes from uh, the the distribution and, and wholesaling side. His family, his his dad and uncle ran a, a wholesaling company. His grandfather ran a distribution company, um, and so you know we're really really good fit. Um, I think uh, everybody's got a different skill set. You know, I come from politics, um, and you know that, that may not seem like a great fit for for running a bourbon company, but um, you know, uh, the way I look at it is, is, you know, this is the candidate. This is who we're trying to elect. Um, and, you know, sometimes you're blessed with a really good candidate. I think in you, with our first release, you know, we had a pretty good candidate. Um, so it doesn't take too much selling and it doesn't take too much arm twisting or convincing, um, to get people to, to give it a try. And, and, you know, so far, so far, so good. Um, you know, we've, we've also, uh, you know, I, we're, you know, this is a, a term that's kind of overused, but we're beyond blessed to have, uh, to have had the opportunity to meet Jim Rutledge, um, you know, teaming with Jim, uh, has just been, I, I can't, I can't even describe it. It's just tremendous. Um, you know, far and away, one of the, one of the greatest human beings I've ever met take take distill, you know, distilling out of it, take his knowledge of this industry out of it. And he's just a, he's just a, a you know, um, just a phenomenal human being. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, here we are, it's, uh, we launched in, uh, in late, uh, late October of last year. Some people thought it was a little bit risky to launch in the, you know, right into the teeth of, of a pandemic. <laughs> um, you know, we're all still home. Uh, a lot of the things that we wanted to do in terms of our launch couldn't happen, um, you know, and, and we've, we've pivoted, we've learned how to be nimble and, and, uh, and figure this out as we go. Um, but, you know, we also have a plan for where we want to be and how we're going to, how we're going to get there and what the, what the next year uh, and beyond starts to look like. So, um, you know, that's, that's a little bit of the background. I'm sure you probably have some questions or wherever you want to take this. I'm happy to yeah, get it. I guess, you know, in, you know, speaking of like, you know, everything with the pandemic and just, uh, you know, that aside, you know, when you were, you know, talking with the people who now have become, you know, your partners and, and all of that, like going back to the very beginning when it was kind of just building on, on what it is now, like, what was that process for you guys and thinking like, 
because, you know, in my mind, like trying to grow or build a new brand nowadays, you know, it seems like a very difficult task. Like you've got to now compete with, you know, all of the other brands that are on the shelves, not only brand wise, but monetarily. So like, you know, what was that whole kind of process like and the thoughts that went into like, yeah, I think we want to, you know, build a, a whiskey brand here in, in 2020. How did, how did that kind of whole, all whole thing shake out for you guys? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're, we're more than two years into the making here. Um, and you know, it's been, it's been interesting. I mean, pandemic wise, you know, we wish that we could be in a war room together every day, um, you know, working together in person, um, and none of that was possible for, you know, what, for a year now. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's made it challenging, but, um, but I think it's also kind of given us some perspective. Um, it's helped us figure out how to, how to work together more efficiently and effectively, um, you know, learn more about each other's uh, strong suits and or our weaknesses so we can, we can cover uh, for each other. You know, we're a pretty cohesive team. We're pretty open. Um, uh, Tim's been through the the startup rigmarole uh, before, and so that was really helpful having him uh, kind of guide that process for us. Um, but uh, yeah, this is this. You know, the 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 way that this all rolled out was, uh, you know, not the way we dreamed of it. You know, you wouldn't. You know, you wouldn't look like at a, at a business school study and say, this is the way you launch a business, right? We want yeah. everybody to be distant, um, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, it's going to be hard to coordinate tastings together. Um, you know, uh, you know, at any point in time, my kid could run across the screen here screaming at me for, yeah. for God knows what. Yeah. Right. I think I think everybody probably listening who has kids, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> understands that right like you just you just never yeah there you go yeah. right you just you just literally never know what's gonna happen i mean there have yeah. been times where it's like okay guys i gotta go boom i'm gone right um <laughs> yeah. right or it's time to do math homework yeah or it's you know whatever um so we've just had to we've had to roll the punches but i gotta say you know um uh, we're we're pleased with the way this has gone um, we know we're competing, Scott, like you said, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a crowded field, um, but we're trying to do things a little bit differently. Um, you know, we don't want to be that kind of nondescript, uh, tan label, uh, you know, brown writing, uh, blend into the blend into the bar sort of brand. Um, yeah. and I, you know, hopefully, you know, we're, we're beginning to, uh, to set our, you know, or way down that path to accomplishing that. Yeah, I know. I know you said uh, you know it was the wrong time to to kind of launch. Um, you know, you know your 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 first your first one, but at the same time, I think it was it was also prime time because you know bourbon's not going to stop being produced because of this. You know, they're they're still going to put out all those other brands. So I still think you know, even though it was a, a bad time, it was still probably, in my opinion, the best time to put one out. So. Um, yeah, but that, you know, it's no, I, I you know, I, I think that I would, I would agree with that, Dan. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, there were a lot of brands, uh, you know, come March, mid March, that were kind of pulling back their releases and saying, you know, let's just table this, let's wait until, let's wait until 2021, let's see where it goes, and you know, we're like, you know, f that, let's, yeah, let's, uh, this, this is our time. We're not going to wait. Um, the other, you know, the other challenge you have with distribution is, you know, in terms of a launch is that if you miss that holiday window, you know, you can wait until like, you know, um, first quarter, kind of late first quarter of the next year. And we didn't want to miss that. We knew we had a good product. We knew that we wanted to get in people's hands and, you know, why wait? Well, and the whiskey, you know, I mean, with that being said, you know, the whiskey kind of speaks for itself, you know, when it's ready and you feel like, Hey, this is the optimal time, then, you know, let's, let's get it out there because in, in all honesty, something that's, that's too young, you know, can be an issue, but at the same time, you know, there are times when things are, are too old for whatever that particular whiskey is, you know, not, not every 12, 13, 14, 15 year old whiskey is the same. They age different and all of that. So if, if it's showing that it's ready to go, well, 
then then the whiskey is telling the story. That that's right. We we thought this was ready to go. Um, you know, I think I think we got some some tasting notes from Jim on uh, on a sample we sent him that that we that we passed on that he said he felt like he was chewing on a Louisville Slugger. Um, you know, we we never want to be over oak to the point that it's yeah. you know you're chewing on a baseball bat. Um, but this one, you know, this was ready and, and, uh, you know, Jim found what we think is the perfect proof point for it. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, just kind of thrilled that, uh, that people like it and that we have a chance to talk to you guys and, and yeah. kind of spread the word about the brand, which is a lot of fun. You know, it was kind of, you know, that was when I first saw it and kind of came across everything, you know, the, you know, I saw the, the age of it, you know, the proof of it. Um, I, I didn't know much more beyond that until I started doing a little bit of looking. But, you know, in the bourbon world, when you start to see some certain proofs and ages, you know, you kind of start to rack your mind about other things you've had and, and all of that. And you like to try to do some comparisons. And I knew I'm like, boy, I've got to somehow see about getting a, a sample of that and, and doing a doing a review. And again, you know, you never know what you're going to get when that thing comes. And yeah. You know, needless to say, Dan and I, we've both done, you know, independent, you know, uh, you know, reviews of it. And and we were, we we were really, we were really impressed. And, you know, aside from getting into all of the the pricing, which I'm sure you know, you guys have all discussed and explored all of that. And we understand the the pushback that brands get, you know, with with value and trying to compare other things. But, you know, aside from that, like when we try to judge a whiskey we're just trying to look at it like, you know, Hey, this is what we know is, this is what we taste. You decide whether or not that sounds good to you and, or does that fit within your price range? If it doesn't, well, there's other alternatives, you know? So that's why when I got it and I did mine, Dan did his, we just started talking about, Hey, like this was my experience. This was his. And, and we, we were, we were pleasantly surprised. I'll, I'll say that we, we knew that it was a good that it was a good whiskey, and it, it didn't matter because we got samples. I mean, we just treat it independent of what it is, and is it a good whiskey? Is it mediocre? Is it you know horrible? That's what we try to break it down. And we knew yeah. when we tasted those. Now we had the fall release, and um, and they were good. I mean, it, I, I think you guys you know hit it out of the park with it. It was a bourbon that I knew this was one that I wanted to sit down and and take your time with and be able to share it with friends like it was that kind of whiskey for me so that's awesome yeah so that's what i like to I, hear we the fall release or do we have the winter release i can't well, remember. I, this, this is the winner this was the winner i had the fall release okay yeah yeah i can't so, so scott i'm gonna be interested i don't know if you if you can think that far back mm -hmm. um but I'm, i'd be intrigued to know um you know what you find what the differences are between fall and winter uh, you know, to be honest, I've only had like a very small little sip. I, I didn't even have enough to like even like do a full review or like break this whole thing down. So I didn't even think about it like this. To be honest, I, I was more I was more excited to share this with with somebody else than than for me to totally get back into it. Um, because <laughs> you, you I mean, have partners, yeah. I mean, uh, honestly, I mean, I was like, you know, this is part of the the struggle for me at times is that I, I do like when you've got a good whiskey and there's people that may not know what that is. Yeah. I, I want them to be able to taste like what it is, because maybe it gets somebody else hooked on on Blue Run. I've already had it. I know I know, generally speaking, what I'm going to get with it, you know. Yeah. There's going to be, I know when you get different releases in, in different times of the year that there could be some, some nuances, but if, if the winter release is, is anything like the fall release, then someone's going to be, I think a happy camper when they try that. Yep. Well, we think so. We think, we think it's really good. Um, yeah. you know, uh, you know, kind of just straight talk we think it's really good um and we hope that we can continue being really good yeah let's let's go back a little bit i know we kind of touched a little bit on the bottle the design all of that and and i know that you guys are super passionate about that part of it so do you want to talk a little bit about kind of like what went into that the people behind that and and what's the 
what's the correlation of the butterflies like with with that whole deal? So I mean, I th- I think I think sure. this this for me I think is the fun part of of knowing a little bit more about just the just the whiskey. But now you get a little more insight on like you know, hey, the the bottle may have more meaning than than what you know it's just a regular bottle off the shelf. So sure. Uh, so you know, Devin McKinney is is you know a design guru. Um, you know. I can't draw a stick figure uh, myself. I just, it's like, you know, you got like seven legs and 12 arms and, um, and no hair. Um, and, you know, Devin, Devin started thinking through, you know, first, first we started thinking about like, really what, what is this, what do we want this brand to stand for? Um, and, you know, we started, you know, we want to expand this this bourbon drinking market, and it's really happening. I mean, if you guys know this, it's not just you know, kind of the that that stereotypical bourbon drinker who's you know, uh, you know, drinking bourbon anymore. It's a really diverse crowd. I mean, you know, here I am. I'm I'm. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is my Black Bourbon Society uh, glass here. Um, you know, for example. And um, I should throw a shout out to to Black Bourbon Society too. They're uh, uh, an amazing group um, uh, of of uh, of bourbon enthusiasts um, who have been just excellent to get to know. Um, but you know, it's people of color and women and you know uh, young people and old people, and it's just it, it's so diverse. And what we've seen what we think we've seen is that, that brands are really just kind of speaking to the, you know, the, the kind of that quintessential bourbon drinker, which is the, you know, uh, kind of the older, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, white guy. Um, (laughs) and, um, you know, this is there, there's, you know, I think there's a reason that, that kind of whiskey, excuse me, whiskey, that, uh, vodka is kind of, kind of, uh, you know, falling out of favor these days is because people want flavor. They want to taste something, yeah. right? And they probably don't want to taste like, you know, um, you know, creme brulee vodka. They, <laughs> they want this. Um, yeah. And, you know, and, and I think that they, they want a brand that hopefully speaks to them and speaks to their values. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to, uh, you know, harness the ideas of youth aspiration and inclusivity um, and, you know, when we started playing with those three words, youth, aspiration, inclusivity, um, you know, Devin, Devin immediately came to the, the idea of a butterfly and the idea of a, metam- a metamorphosis and change, right? And, um, you know, uh, so, you know, the really, the goal is, can we change uh, the way that, that a brand deals with consumers and, and works with consumers and interacts with consumers. Um, and you know, it's different, right? I mean, it really does, it, you know, it does stand out. I mean, I just, I look at this and, you know, if you have, I don't know if, if that's visible or not here, but like the, it, it just, if I had more liquid in it, I, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I apologize yeah, for that. That's a good problem. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yep. Uh, but you know, it, it just, it's actually, you know what? I do have a different one. If you're, if you're a consumer, if you, everybody's on there, hasn't seen it, let me just uh, pop this uh, here. Um, and uh, you know, it's just, it's just a different sort of uh, here's everything's mirrored as you can see me go like yeah. left and right and right and left, you know? So we just want this to stand, stand out on a shelf. We want it to look different. We want it to feel different and we want it to taste great. Um, and, and so that idea of the metamorphosis of change is, is really kind of, a, kind of a, a powerful sort of idea, but it's also an emblem in a way. It's a mascot, if you will, but a, more of an, you know, kind of an emblem. Um, and, uh, you know, the advice that we got from Jim Rutledge early on was that people will buy your bottle for the way it looks one time. And then um, people will buy your bottle a second time if it tastes good. Yep. Right. So, you know, the bottle can look great and we think it looks great. Um, and we're going to have, you know, we're going to have some fun with the, the, with that design process as we go. Um, you know, uh, and, and I think people will like the way it continues to look and the bottle continues to evolve. Um, 
but you know, really the bottom line is it's got to taste great yeah. yeah. or else people are going to stop buying it. Yeah. Um, and you know, if it doesn't taste great, you know, we're not going to put it out because it's a product, it, it's a product that we want to buy too. And we want to drink and we don't like to drink things that don't taste good. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you, you kind of nailed it with that. You know, people will buy off of, you know, an appearance of whatever it may be one time. And if whatever the product is that you buy one time is not good, you're not going to go back to it no matter how shiny it may be. So if, you know, the proof is in the pudding, if what's in that bottle, if that's what we're talking about is, is worth that to somebody else, then, then so be it. That's what will keep them coming back. And, you know, not to say that the bottle is, you know, not a factor because it is, it allows you guys to build off of those things and, and use it in a different way. And it is different because you, you, you can never like push aside, like the marketing side of it and how something looks. I mean, that's what attracts everybody to something right away, you know, without knowing exactly what it is that everyone's got to go off of what the appearance is. And then the, the proof is in the pudding after that. But one other thing I wanted to touch on, I know that you've mentioned his name already, but Jim Rutledge, um, I think most people in the whiskey industry know who he is and what he was all about with Four Roses and now Cream of Kentucky and all that. What was it that kind of either drew you to him or got you guys involved with him mm -hmm. and, and, and made him be the, the right person for, for your company? I, you know, I mean, I, I don't... I, I don't even know where to start with Jim. Um, honestly, he's, you know, if, if there were a, a Mount Rushmore, he should be on it. Um, you know, he's a superstar. The guy's just, the, the guy's just, you know, um, you know, a superstar. Um, uh, you know, we had, we had the chance to, to meet him early on, very early on. Um, and he liked, the way we were going. He, he liked the vision for, for the brand. Um, it shocked us that he would want to work with it. would be like, you know, um, you know, Michael Jordan or Le LeBron James um, saying like, yeah, I'll play basketball with you, yeah, you yeah. know? Um, and, uh, you know, I, I can't speak for Jim, but we're just, we're just lucky. We're lucky that he had the desire to, to work with us. Um, he's a blast to talk to. Um, you know, I mean, I've learned so much from him every time I talk to him, I just, I feel like I just want to write everything down or record the conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So I can just relive it over and over and yeah. memorize everything he said, because it's just like, you know, the, 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 the pearls of wisdom don't stop yeah. with him. Yeah. Like every, I mean, he's been through every situation. Um, and you know, it's just, it's really, um, I, I don't know, man. We, we threaded the needle, I guess. It's like somehow or whatever, you know, shot the moon, I guess. Um, somehow we got lucky enough to work with, uh, with Jim Rutledge and, and, you know, he's, he's amazing. Yeah. So, so Mike, while you're on the top of, of, uh, of Rutledge, so I, obviously right now you guys are distilling um, your own, your own product. So, what, you know, when you sat down with Jim and, and you started discussing like what you wanted, you know, what you envisioned in, in, um, in your bourbon and what you wanted to create, like what, what was that like? And, and then how would that compare to, um, what you guys currently have? Well, I, lo I lost you on the last, uh, right after what we currently have. Was there anything after that, Dan? So like, so, I mean, how would, um, how would the product, you know, the, the distillate that you guys are creating now, um, do you want it to be similar to what you currently have out on the market now, or is this something that you will kind of want to put your own twist on now that it's your own distillate? Um, yes. <laughs> a little bit. We're going to need a yeah. little more clarification than that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, we, we really, we really like the product that's out there. Um, you know, we'd like to figure out a way uh, to kind of uh, emulate what what we've what we've sourced. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a little bit of you know, there's a little bit of mash bill magic. There's a little bit of barrel magic. There's a little bit of aging and you know weather magic um, that 
you know, where, where fun and interesting things can happen. Um, but you know, this, this, you know, this is the template yeah. if we can, if we can get there, you know, the beauty with Jim is that on his, on his new make, um, you know, it can still be fairly young and it can be amazing. Um, you know, I mean, he's literally got this magic wand, we think. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, you guys might agree, um, you know, he's really good at what he does, um, you know, just in terms of, of, you know, his selection of grains, his selection of, of yeast, um, his process. It's just, it's, um, it's, it's really, the guy's, the guy's a talent. I mean, he's, he's an absolute treasure. Yeah. Um, so. I should have been, you know, I should have explained it a little bit more. I mean, I just didn't know if like you guys were going to change, um, you know, the mash bill up completely um, or if you were going to kind of stick to what you currently have, you know, out there on the market. So I just wasn't sure, you know, if it was going to be a completely different twist on what you have or, you know, going down the same, going down the same road. It's going to be, I mean, I, you know, knock on wood, it's going to be, it'll be fairly similar. Yeah. Um, you know, it may not be exactly similar. Right. Um yeah. And, uh, you know, I think what you're going to, what you're going to get is you're going to get a lot of, you're going to get a lot of fruit kind of fruit forward. You're going to get a lot of baking spices, um, and you'll get, uh, you'll get the perfect sweetness. Um, you know, I, for one, like, I like the, the, the taste of, you know, almost spooning brown sugar into my mouth. Yes. Um, right. And, uh, um, so you're going to get, you're going to get a lot of the fun stuff that you like, you know, the molasses, brown sugar, butterscotch, um, those sorts of, those sorts of, of, uh, of, of flavors. Um, so, uh, you know, but, but it's going to be interesting, Dan, to see what happens in time, you know, we'll, we'll yeah. hopefully we'll, we'll come back on, um, with you and Scott in, you know, three, four or five years, uh, whenever the new make is ready to roll. And we can have a really interesting conversation if we can re actually remember this far back. <laughs> yep. yeah. Yeah. No, no promises on remembering, but I would love to have you back on in, the, in a couple of years. That's for well, sure. I think the more we drink, the, the, the more we we're going to remember, isn't that the Probably. way that goes? <laughs> that I, think so. I think so. Well, let me ask you this. So is the, will the idea to, will be, will it be, will the idea be, to continue to have maybe some source stuff that has a little bit of age and work that in with like the new distillate as it kind of begins to age is to always have something with a little bit of age to it versus some of the younger stuff on the market. Yeah, I think, I think that's generally the idea. Um, you know, it's a, it's, it's, um, that would be, that would be the goal, um, you know, to have a nice blend. I don't mean a blend of, of, of old and new, but you know, a blend of products of, of some younger stuff and some, some more aged product. Um, but ultimately, you know, we would like to, we would like to, to distill our way out of, out of the sourcing game. Yeah. You know, that, that's always an interesting transition. You know, there's been other companies who've done it was started out with, you know, something that's big and bold and now you have to kind of, you know, new ref, for example, you know, they had OKI, they led out of the gate with that. So they had, you know, older MGP and, and all of that. And then, it, I mean, I, I guess for me, it seems like a little bit of a gamble to go from that, like right into your own stuff. They did it. They were relatively successful, I would say at, at doing it, but it seems like such an interesting transition to build, to build this up with, here's kind of the flavor profile that you establish and then completely switch it over to like being nothing. So I always wondered if, you know, maybe keeping some of the old stock or something to have a couple of special releases or whatever, just to, you know, tie in a, a, a couple of things once in a while. But, you know, I mean, by no means am I, you know, a whiskey brand person. I always, yeah. I just always wondered like, you know, what it's like the, like the anxiety of trying to go from this, to now all of this and, and shift shift gears completely. So, well, you know, I think that if if we if we are able to release a handful of products that instill consumer confidence, um, you know, we're just we're just hoping people will take the ride with us. You know, just give us a shot. If you like what you taste now, um, and you know, you end up buying a, a bottle or two in our next two or three or four releases, and you like those. Hopefully you're going to, you're going to roll with us for a while. Yep. 
All right. Well, Dust, Dustin kind of brought up a good point, which a lot of people do too, where they, they blend a little bit of old and new together. And, and you know, there, there's a lot of people who are very, very successful doing that as well. So I don't know if that's a, an option. I mean, sure. I'm sure I'm not telling you guys something you haven't already explored. I mean, I'm just trying to get an idea of kind of the thoughts on, on future, future releases. Um, sure. Well, so, that, you know, that, that worked well for Kentucky Owl too. I think they did, uh, they did a good job with kind of blending the old and new it's, it's, uh, let's just say it's on the table. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's, so with, with kind of staying with the whiskey theme here. So, um, I'm pouring the last of this guys. <laughs> yeah. that. I was going to okay. say yeah. that bottle is full. Oh, you're talking about, okay, good, good, good. Yeah. Yeah. So what about so what about anything beyond what's like out on the market now? Are there any talk about barrel proof things, single barrels, other kinds of of things along those lines? Absolutely, I'm glad you asked. Um, yeah. So in let's call it the middle of next month, uh, we're going to release. A, it's going to be very limited in quantity, but we're going to have a, a single barrel at cask strength, we're going to do, uh, we're going to do 10 barrels. Um, mm -hmm. it'll be thir it's 13 and a half years old. So it's, it's this, it's, it's this bourbon six months older, um, at a variety of different, uh, uh, proof. So it's, um, we've had a few people taste it. Um, a few people have said they, uh, absolutely love it. Um, and I think, uh, I think you guys are going to like it too. So if you like, if you like high proof, uh, you're going to love this single barrel. Yeah. Um, you know, we're going to follow that up with another, uh, uh another small batch, uh, of age product. Um, and then, uh, and then you're going to, you know, as the year rolls on into, <laughs> excuse me, into summer and beyond, um, we're going to have, uh, a couple other, uh, products that, uh, that people, um, I think are really going to love. Um, and, uh, one of them will be our first rye also. Oh boy. Oh. Oh boy. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, and, hey, we're, we're in, we're in a day and age now where, I mean, rye has exploded over the last couple of years. So when people, yeah. when people are either able to make or source or whatever they do to get a, to get a really good rye whiskey, um, I mean, it, doesn't take too long for them to kind of explode and just be gone and people kind of, you know, rave about them. So hopefully that will, will turn out well for you guys. Yeah. Thanks. Rye, rye is really hot, obviously, like you said, Scott, and it's, um, you know, it's not just for, it's not just for mixing anymore. No. Um, you know, it's, our rye is very drinkable. We think it's the best rye on the planet. Um, you know, uh, hopefully you guys will agree when you taste it. Um, but it's going to, I think it's going to blow people's minds. It's blown my mind. Um, you know, I actually wasn't a huge rye drinker until I tasted this rye. And now <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm all, in. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, it's really it's, good. Yeah. I am on board. Yeah. It's, it's always, it's always amazing when, when that kind of transition happens and it seems to happen with with everybody with something some somewhere along the way is that when they taste something that they weren't either too sure about or didn't like, and then you actually have something that to that person is, is really good and kind of changes your whole, like, you know, thought process on like, ah, I didn't like that. Or for whatever reason, it, it's always a fun transition when that thing hits and the light bulb goes on and it kind of takes you down that rabbit hole. Yeah. That's right. I mean, you guys, obviously, I mean, you know, you know, your stuff, your listeners, your, your, you know, the people who are subscribed to your channels know what they're talking about. Um, and uh, so, you know, it, it's not like, you know, kind of a beginner crowd where it's like, well, have you ever had a rye sandwich, you know, a sandwich on rye before, uh, you know, it's a very different experience. It's just smooth and drinkable and, and, and um, uh, approachable. I think yeah. is the other, the other kind of, I, 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 you know, I'm not quite sure what the words are, but it's, it's a very approachable rye. Um, but this, this single barrel guys. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, well I mean, hey, that, I mean, we're, 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 we're in a, we're in a day and age where everybody um, like bubble, bubble bath bourbon said it before. I think he said it was, we were all like a bunch of proof, 
proof statutes or something. I think the whole play, <laughs> the, the, whole, the, whole play on, the whole play on like the prostitute thing or whatever. But I mean, it is. I mean, we're a lot of people who enjoy really good whiskey, and for a good reason, you know, that in higher proofs, you know, comes the complexity a lot of times of of bourbon. You know, you get a lot of flavors that you don't get in something that's watered down or has a lot of water added. So, you know, it's easy to do that. But again, at the same time, you know, by, by offering someone something at barrel proof, if you do want to add an ice cube or a l- little bit of water, or whatever, you know, you have the ability to do it, to change it to your profile. So, you know, I, I get completely why people enjoy, you know, high proof um, bourbon. So, hey, uh, hey Mike, um, speaking of the single barrel, do you know uh, where the distribution uh, will be for those 10 barrels? Uh, yes, generally. Um, okay. So we're going to have, um, I should actually say, we, we're we going to have some product up on uh, on Sealbox. Oh, see, boy. There we go. <laughs> okay. Nice. Okay. okay. There you so, go. All um, right. You know, if you guys, if you guys know Blake from, from yeah. Bourboner and, yep. and uh, whatnot, um, so we'll have product there. Um, we're going to be in Kentucky, Georgia, uh, Tennessee, South Carolina, uh, DC, Maryland, okay. Delaware, uh, and, uh, uh, California. Okay. I think that's more or less the list. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's going to be limited. We're talking, you know, I'm going to estimate because we haven't dumped the barrels yet. Um, you know, thousand plus or minus bottles. Okay. Okay. It's a very, right. so, okay. Okay. Very, so yeah. super, I mean, a super thousand, limited. Thousand, thousand, thousand bottles ish out of 10 barrels. So, I mean, you've got relatively shorter barrels. I mean, that's a pretty good, you know, yeah. a, a, a pretty good amount for, I mean, I should say it's not a huge amount of bottles coming from, from 10 barrels, but, you know, by the time you lose a lot of it to the old angel share and everything, it's, it's yeah. kind of gone. Um, yeah, hopefully, Ash- hopefully our yield, by the way, sorry to interrupt you. Hopefully our oh. yield is, is far better, but like, you know, I'm just at the point where I'm thinking, okay, I just got to make sure I grab a bottle for my dad. If I can do that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. good. Yeah. yeah you know? That's, that's, that's a good, that's all. Yes. Always start with the family. If you can, well, first, first start with the wife and then take care of the rest of the people. You know, yeah. those are the, that's how the order I've learned that. The yeah, that's way. right. I should take my, care of my wife. I mean, she's been very, very supportive throughout this and, you know, I'm sure there could be other wives and I'm sure a lot of the people listening now have wives who are like, my God, you waste a lot of time on bourbon, but um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And money, yeah. time yeah. and money, right? Yeah. But I've literally, this- literally, I've never heard that from my wife ever. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got to meet this woman. Yeah, um, yeah, but I, but I do have a supportive yeah. wife. Yeah. In fact, we all do. Uh, you know, all five of us have supportive wives who've who've really you know stood by us um, and not said, "You guys are crazy. What are you doing?" But they've seen the vision from the beginning, and and um, so you know. But Scott, yeah, I need to meet your wife. <laughs> yeah, I was lying before. She, I, I get it all the time. Like I've had too much bourbon. You spend too much, and I get it. I get it. But I don't um, think you have enough. I'm looking at your bar behind yeah, you. I don't know. Yeah, enough, enough is enough is like a relative term. I mean, what it is, is. What we're, we're, we're still we're still waiting for him to crack that Al Young behind him. It's coming. I already told you. <laughs> I already told you guys. I get. I can I just get busted all the time. So I'm on my yeah. fi- on my fiftieth birthday. On my fiftieth birthday, I'll, I'll God, crack, I, I haven't cracked mine either yet, so don't. I'll, feel I'll, I'll crack it open. Actually, actually, on my fiftieth birthday, I didn't tell Dan this, but I plan on cracking his bottle for my fiftieth birthday. He doesn't okay. know this yet, but hey, it's I, a nice I'm, gift, Dan. Let's do it. Yeah, do it. <laughs> do it. Uh, Dustin asked before about the the rye in terms of. I know now there's a lot of people playing with different mash bills on rye. Are you able to share at all, kind of what? that may be or at all i wish i could this is it's going to be a okay. sourced uh, a sourced rye and we can't disclose the source or the mash okay. bill okay. um but you know to answer that question it is really good um and i know that doesn't answer anybody's question like how good is it well it's really good <laughs> we think it's we you know we think it's we think it's amazing um yeah. and you know uh, we're excited to get it out there into the marketplace and, um, 
you know, hopefully we'll have, uh, you know, continue to expand our distribution by that point in time. And we'll be able to service a lot more people in a lot more states and make it a lot easier to find these bottles of Blue Run, which, you know, as it stands, you know, they're, um, they're difficult to find. We know people are hitting up friends in states where we have distribution, trying to find some bottles. And, you know, if you guys can hook me up with a friend in a state that does has, have distribution, I need a bottle too. Um, <laughs> well, we were, we were, we were, ta- we were talking before we went live about that. That whole theory is that everyone thinks that the producers of whiskey just have endless supplies of it. And, and I always said, just in my Dan, all of us who, who, who kind of do these kinds of things, you know, we get told a lot of times that you guys as consumers have more whiskey of, of our whiskey than, you know, than, than you do. So if I asked you, yeah. you have no, you have none of your own stuff to give anybody. We probably may, we may have more whiskey uh, than, than you actually do. So it's always kind of I, a fun thing. So I think, I think that's right. Um, you know, uh, I mean, I wish I could say, Hey, let's go into the garage. I've got, you know, I've got 200 cases sitting there. Uh, ready to roll, you know, um, you know, and I can just, you know, uh, you know, give one to the mailman every day that he drops off the mail and, you know, whatnot. But, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, I guess that's a, you know, that's a blessing and a curse, right? Um, it's, uh, you know, we, we will like the idea of creating demand, but we're not doing this artificially to create demand. We're putting out as much product as we can. Yeah. Um, and trying to push it out there as fast as we can, um, you know, within reason, it's gotta be good, obviously, but, um, that's really the goal, um, you know, is not to, to create this like, you know, pappy experience where it's like, yeah. you know, if, if, you know, you'd be, it's almost easier to win the lottery than it is to win the pappy lottery. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we want to be able to, we want to be able to get these bottles in people's hands, you yeah. know, yeah. um, you know, Scott, I'd love for you to be able to, you're in Wisconsin. I'd love for you to be able to find a bottle there. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, without, you know, uh, really going, you know, on a, on a big hunt. Well, um, and I mean, for everybody else listening, same thing. Yeah. I mean, at least, I mean, in fairness, at least it's nice from the standpoint of some of the states that may not have like direct distribution that you may be able to go to like a seal box or somebody else and still be able to get a bottle, you know, into your state. You know, I know some of the the controlled states and things like that. You know, Pennsylvania. I know Pennsylvania is a a brutal state. I know that Ohio can be can be awfully difficult. So, you know, there there are those states that that do make it difficult to to get anything. You know, period. But um, you know, yeah, it, it and those states that, change too, right? Sometimes yeah, those yeah. those those regulations change, and and you know we, you know, could offer product in certain states online one day, and then the next day it could change, you know, without any doing on our side. It's just kind of, you know, the way it works, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, you know, but we, we would like that to change too. Yeah. Um, you know, well, here's make a, it easier. Another, and here's another, another brand in here, Bill from, uh, from Blue Ash Farm. He, he knows the, the distribution game a, as well. And it's, 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 it's <laughs> It's difficult. I mean, you, you, you've got to, you've got to be able be a hustler, but at the same time for smaller brands, which I, I think a lot of times gets not totally like conveyed or understood is the fact that if you've got, let's just say, you know, a thousand bottles, like of your single barrel, you've got being released, you can't be distributed in 50 States. There's nowhere no. for it to all go. So, you know, you can't be, I think, relatively small and, and be distributing all over the place, or you're going to like make other, you know, markets angry because they're not getting enough. I mean, each, each state can't get one bottle. Nobody wants one bottle. <laughs> you know? Hey, hey, so, hey um, th- there was a, Scott, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that's okay. Um, th- there was a question. It said, um, uh, what to say? Whose is it? Well, uh, it's Dustin. So, um, what about the whiskey that you guys are distilling? Can you discuss the mash bill that you will be using? Um, we could, if I had it memorized um, and I don't off the top of my head um, and I didn't even bring my phone in, so I can't look it up at the moment. Um, are, are, but, you, are you guys distilling both uh, bourbon and rye? Yeah. 
so we're currently distilling bourbon. So Jim, Jim is, uh, Jim's doing the bourbon distillation for us. Um, you know, we laid, we laid down some barrels, uh, last year. Um, we're scheduled to be, uh, in the distillery with Jim twice this year. Um, and, uh, uh, I'll have to get back to you on that, uh, on that mash bill. Um, yeah, yeah, I think, I think, I think, I could, I, I could well, guess, but it's going to be off and I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to be off. I, I mean, I think, I think people nowadays are, are, you know, always, always, um, you know, curious about mash bills just because how it relates to different profiles, high barley, you know, low barley, high corn. I mean, it's, so I, I think it goes beyond just that and, and, and really, frankly, I mean, the whiskey and flavor that we all talk about, like Dustin knows, I mean, he, he does whiskey reviews and stuff as well and, and everything that there's so many other factors that play into the flavor of a whiskey outside of a mash bill, the, you know, the yeast and the barrel entry proof, all of these different things, you know, where the barrels are, are aged, all of that. So the height, uh, right. The, the how many, quality, how many, how many levels? Great of that, of that, uh, of the Rick house, um, you know, what the weather's like, yeah. um, you know, the yeast selection process is a fascinating one. Um, right. I mean, it's, it's who knew I, you know, it's, it's not like bacon bread. Um, yeah. you know, it, it really can pull out uh, a number of different flavors. Um, yeah. you know, and, and even the barrel treatment, right. What are you going to do with the barrel? You're going to toast it. What level are you going to char it at? Um, yeah it's really just, it's fun. Like this is fun stuff. What, what, what you guys do is a blast, right? Yeah. Right. Cause you know, uh, taking something and, and like this, this is like, my wife calls it bar mitzvah bourbon it being 13 yeah. years old. And it's like, that is a long time, right? Is. That is a long time to wait and be patient. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, you can taste this. We've got gin tasting our product every, uh, every six months to ensure that, you know, we're not going to over Oak, um, you know, but, uh, it's fun to see it mature and grow and change. It's a, it's yeah. a blast. Yeah. Well, when, I mean, you know, like you just said, you know, when you think about it, you know, that, that whiskey you're drinking right now sat somewhere 13 years and did nothing. Yeah. And now, now you're going to consume it. And, you know, that, that for me is like, you know, Dan and, and, and I, and a lot of other people, you know, why we like to drink the whiskey and share it. Cause I mean, doing all this by yourself wouldn't be nearly, you know, <laughs> the fun that, you know, it is when you can share it and have good stories and, you know, shoot the, you know, what with people and, and all of that. So, I mean, that's kind of the, the tie and the lure to whiskey is that it, it, creates a lot of debate and conversations and, and all of that. And that's the and community that's too. And saying. community, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the idea uh, I've, I've, you know, since we've launched, I've met so many people and I, you know, coming from politics, you expect like really sharp elbows in, in every industry everywhere. Right. Um, this industry is not like that. It's really open and welcoming and people want to talk and, and like you say, debate, but ultimately we all love the same thing. Um, yeah. and it's really been, it's been fun. It's, it's just like, you know, I can't wait to the, to be able to actually talk to people in person and, yeah. you know, you know, cheers, this is going to be a blast, right? When, if, when, when we get to a point that we can do that, um, because that takes it even deeper, right? Like I would love to be sitting obviously at one of your bars right now, um, doing this, doing this live together, or all three of us together, because, you know, um, and then after we're done, we can, you know, crack that Al Young. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I think he's, I think he's, clearly, he's, he's clearly talking to Dan about that cracking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're today. texting I, each other about I, it. At pre-prohibition, just not that, not that long ago. So, um, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, yeah, you, yeah. you want to talk about somebody who's got elite whiskeys, like our, our boy Dusty Dan right here, you just cracked. What was that one? Nineteen sixteen. Yeah, I saw that. That's crazy. What was that like, um, it's still good. I'll um, I I can I can chat with you through a PM. Like I, I'll send I can send you a sample of it. Yeah, no, don't do that. Don't don't waste it on me. Oh, don't it's, do that. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's meant for sharing, man. It's meant for sharing. So I, I, I did want to point out a comment though that Dustin said, and I completely agree with him. Um, 
He said that yeast is grossly underrated. It's why modern Pappy tastes nothing like the legendary Pappy that started the whole craze. I completely agree with that statement. Completely agree 100%. Yep. Yeah. I, yep. Dustin, you're right. 100% right. Um, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, that's, uh, it. that's, that's exactly it. There's so many factors that play into things that so many of us get hung up on the mash bills. And that's kind of a, that's like a lead in to, as far as I'm concerned, it's a lead in to trying to figure out what it is you like. But, you know, when you start breaking things down, like, you know, standard sour mash, sweet mash, barrel entry proof, all of those things, there's so many yeast strains. Um, uh, you know, there's just so many things that you can go into. I mean, Dr. Patrick Heist, I mean, you want to talk about a mad scientist who's doing great things. I mean, he, he can explain all that stuff to you all day long. And he did a Ted talk on it. It was like, your, your mind is, your mind is blown just listening to him talk about all those factors that play into flavors and everything. But, um, all right. So we're, we're almost a, an hour in, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to keep you. We're you know, going all night though. Right. <clears throat> yeah. we're, we're going all night, aren't we? Absolutely. Yeah, we can, okay, we can. Good. We, yeah. if you want, if you want to go all night, we can go all night. So yeah. it would be like you said before. It would be much. It would be much funner if we could do this for an hour and then go to the bar and then continue conversations and drink and all that. That's the <laughs> part. But That's even because right, I'm running, I'm running out of booze over here. So oh, once, uh, <laughs> well, once, once we're done, once we're done here, don't go. I'll end this, but don't go anywhere. Don't sign no, off. No. Or yeah. so we'll, we'll chat. We'll chat for a few minutes. No. Uh, after but yeah. all right. So in order to kind of wrap things up a little bit, so what do what I know we kind of touched on it a little bit, but you know, what does the future kind of like look like for, for blue run? Like, I know we talked about some of the, the new releases and, and, you know, things that are coming up, but you know, what's the goal, you know, ultimately to, to get this into people's hands and just, you know, kind of your, your thoughts on, on that. Sure. Um, well, the, the goal is that we would do uh, four releases a year, so seasonal, um, and that you know we can reach a point uh, in terms of supply that we've got um, that we've got that scale. Um, you guys hear me? My my battery tells me it's running low, but uh, I can I can deal with that. Um, you know, so we can reach some scale here. Um, and get more product into more people's uh, hands, um, you know, starting this year, um, you know, we're ramping up this, um, uh, you know, the uh, distillation. Hold on one second. I'm going to have somebody bring me a cord. Okay. Yeah. And, and while, while Mike's doing that, what we'll do is um, in a few minutes, I'll run the little, uh, I'll ask uh, our, our, our buddy Google, unless you do, Dan, unless you've got something where you can do it, but if not, no big deal. I can, I can run. So if you guys want to, to get a sample of the, uh, this is the, this is the new, uh, winner. This is the new winner release of the, the blue run. So any super chat will get you entered into that. And I'm going to try to along a, a comparative bourbon. So you can see the difference in complexities and kind of how the whole thing, uh, shakes out. So, um, Hey Scott, hey, Scott but, if I super check and I, can I win that sample too? You can, you can win uh, it. <laughs> you can, you everybody better, should be you super get, chatting you get right away. Get it on it. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to super chat too. Okay. We're good guys. I'm back. I'm back in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 sorry there's for a, that. Uh, so there's someone from uh, my state that says there might be some available uh, at a store that I've shopped at before. So if there is, I'll make sure that, um, I, I can get one to you if, if it's there. So. Ooh, excellent. Um, so sorry about that, guys. But, you know, obviously we just want to ramp up production. We want to ramp up the product in order to, to serve more people. Um, we're going to have some merch coming this year, uh, not even this year, uh, next month. Um, that's going to be kind of fun. Devin McKinney designed. Um, and, uh, you know, the other thing that we're, we're looking forward to is we're, we're looking forward to being able to get out on the road um, and travel to some of these, some of these retail stores and meet with, uh, you know, meet with these retailers, meet with the people who are actually buying our product and enjoying it. Um, and, you know, just try to integrate more into this, into this bourbon community. You know, we're new, 
again, we launched during a pandemic, so we didn't get to go out and shake some hands and have conversations with people. That's why it's so nice to be able to do this with you, uh, with you guys. Yeah. Um, you know, but it also doesn't replace that in-person sort of experience that, that we're all really looking for right now. I think we're all craving it at this point in time. Yeah. Yep. Indeed. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, well, so I mean, that's, it's... yeah, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Nope. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just, I was just gonna say, I mean, I think that's the important thing is that, I mean, people who are in the whiskey industry want to be out there shaking hands and cheersing and all of that and sharing the whiskey and, and building the brand up. I mean, it's, and this was one of the, the reasons why when Dan and I kind of talked about, you know, getting this thing together was that, you know, we really enjoyed it. And, and I, I, I thought it would be really nice to allow, you know, you to kind of share with other people and, and anybody who watches the, the replay will get an idea of kind of, you know, things behind the brand, what's going on, where things are going. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we could, we could do this. So oh, I'm, I'm uh, really grateful that you would invite me on and I get to know you guys a little bit better and, and. You know, thanks to everybody who tuned in to uh, uh, learn a little bit more about Blue Run. And if you haven't tried Blue Run yet, um, give us a shot. Um, and if you can't find it, your you know your opportunity is coming. It's coming really soon. It's going to happen. You know, in the next month or sometime this year. Um, whenever you're ready for us, we're ready for you. Can you share one more time, uh, like some of the states that you guys are distributed in, just so that people kind of uh, know know that again? Sure, absolutely. Uh, Kentucky, Georgia, uh, South Carolina, Tennessee, uh, DC, Maryland, uh, Delaware, and California. Okay. And then right. not to forget sealbox.com. So, um, you know, we're, we're really excited about this new relationship with Sealbox. Um, that'll go live with the, uh, with the launch of the, the single barrel. Um, and, um, you know, um, so be on the lookout. If, if you're looking for notifications or like, how do I know, um, go to our website, uh, blue run spirits.com sign up, uh, scroll all the way down to the bottom, um, sign up for notifications. We'll give you, uh, uh, early notice about, uh, the availability of product, uh, at least on the online side. Um, but you know, we want you to give us a try and then, the other thing is we want to hear from you. Um, you know, I'm, I'm available, uh, you know, Dan and, and Scott know this, you know, if you want to shoot me a note, it's Mike at blue run spirits.com. Um, I will respond to you. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, um, even on Twitter. Um, but if you reach out to us with a comment or a question, you can be rest assured. We're going to get back to you. Yeah. And that was, and that's, and that's nice in, in today's day and age to be able to reach out to people. And, and, and it, it just kind of goes to show the, the whiskey community in terms of how they are, whether it's on the level of where you guys are producing and a new brand, you know, all the way down to like us who do reviews and, and things like that. So, I mean, we, we appreciate it and it allows us to build relationships with, with people and, you know, be able to do these kinds of things. Cause at the end of the day, this is the fun stuff. You know, if we can share anything or, you know, pique the interest of somebody else who didn't know before. I mean, that's always kind of been my, my goal with things. So, all right. So before we end this, um, if anybody wants to enter to win this and one other sample of something, I will include uh, super chat now, and I'll give you a, a, another minute to, to get that in. And if not, I will, uh, I'll run like a, I'm just going to ask our, our, our boy Google and uh, we'll let them, uh, We'll let them decide a number. I've got everyone. I've got everybody written down here on my old, my trusty notebook that my wife gave me because she's told me she was sick of me, um, <laughs> sick of her always cleaning up all my notes for all my reviews and stuff. I do. She gave me a notebook and told me to keep it all in there. So, anyway, well, that was thoughtful. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it, it actually. I kind of resisted it, but um, it's actually become a a really nice thing now. I've got all my uh, stuff in in one place. So. All right. So, all right, we'll look at Hendo coming in late here. So, all right. Um, we're almost, I've got 13, I've got 13 people right now that are in play for this. So, all right, we're going to cut it off now. So we got lucky number 13. So everyone thinks 
So let's do this. I'm, oh, we got our Jared Riley. Okay, hang on. Every, everyone wants the blue – everyone, Mike, hold tight. Everyone wants the blue run. So. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, hang, hang tight. So Jared had to um, – he had to get us off the lucky number 13. Oh, we got RVA whiskey now coming in a little more. All right. Um, and then there's number 15 is uh, Mike Montgomery with an M. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That guy, that guy I'm not too sure about. So we're going to have to see. <laughs> yeah. that, but Be wary. Yeah. So, all right. We're at 15. So we're going to, uh, we're going to call it, we're going to call it right now. So I'm going to run, I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to ask Google right now to give me a random number between one and 15 so that everybody can, can know. And I'll tell, and I've got all you guys down and I've got all the numbers and stuff and I'll tell you exactly who it is. So, Hey Google, give me a random number between one and 15. One. Number one. <laughs> Whoa. And, and that goes to, and it goes to our boy whiskey shits. <laughs> so, yes, that's funny. So whiskey, whiskey shits of all the people that entered. The very first person is the one that ends up winning the thing. So that, congratulations. Yeah, send me a send me a, a direct message, or you can uh, email me uh, at mybourbonjourney01 at gmail.com. I, I'm sure you can figure out how to get a hold of me. So we'll we'll make sure to get the uh, the samples uh, to you on that. So thanks everybody for uh, for entering tonight. And then uh, more importantly, Mike, thank you yes. so much for, for joining Dan and I tonight. We greatly appreciate your, uh, your time. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thanks for having yeah. me. And Dan, thanks for being my Vanna White tonight. I, I greatly <laughs> appreciate that. So hey man, I, you can't, you can't pay to be this beautiful. I'm sorry. You, I, <laughs> no comment on that. I, I, we'll, I, wish, we'll, right? I wish, I know I wish. Yeah. So, and then everybody uh, else, uh, thank you so much for joining tonight. We had a great time. I I'm, happy to do these things. I like doing them. I like sharing all the different, you know, people behind the brands and, and all of that. Uh, so, you know, thanks for tuning in and sticking with us uh, throughout the uh, the evening. Greatly appreciate it. So uh, with that being said, I'm sure, I don't know what I've got planned for next Tuesday. It'll be something. Um, before we go, uh, Mike, where can everyone again find you at? Uh, Blue Run Spirits, email all that one more time, and then we'll, we'll kick it over to Dan. Uh, BlueRunSpirits.com. Uh, you can find us on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at at, uh, at Blue Run Spirits. Um, and you can email me directly at Mike at BlueRunSpirits.com. I hope to hear from you. Great. Dusty, how about you, bud? You can find me on Instagram at Dusty Dan's Whiskey Reviews. And um, you can also find me on my YouTube channel, which is Dusty Dan's Whiskey Reviews as well. Um, just going to start getting into some live streams here soon. Um, but, uh, still going to stick with the, uh, putting out the reviews once or twice a week. So cool. Click that subscribe yeah, button for dusty Dan. Yeah. Look out for Thank dusty Dan. He's coming in hot. He's coming in hot. So, all right, there. guys, thanks so much for joining everybody who, uh, who tuned into the, uh, the live tonight. Thank you so much for, uh, for tuning in. Always love seeing everybody in a lot of the same faces. Uh, uh, appreciate that. Actually not faces, but names. So, uh, hopefully one day we'll get to finally meet or something. So, um, all right guys, thanks for, uh, thanks for everything tonight. And, uh, we'll see you next Tuesday. Cheers. Cheers guys. <laughs>